Hello everyone, I'm Shannon Slatton. As the exact route of the Blue Line light rail extension project continues to be discussed, proponents say to expect more driveway conversations as staff collect input on where the line should go. This week, Hennepin County Commissioner Jeff Lundy updated the Brooklyn Park City Council. Stop hoping the line comes here and start demanding the line comes here. Stop asking, oh, we hope that we can get some stuff. We hope that we'll get some investment. I think that's complete, complete and utter BS. We need to demand stuff. Lundy pointed to development in Brooklyn Park that has already come to fruition, like the Target Campus and the Hennepin County Library, because of the planned Blue Line extension. Lundy told the council that he feels optimism for the project because the stakeholders own all the property needed to make it happen. Blue Line should be renamed the Equity Line because it's all about equity. Look at the map, look where poverty is, look where diversity is, look where the people who need transportation. This is the line that should have been built first. I would actually say that we should have been the first line before all the rest. This line addresses more inequities in our communities. Lundy acknowledged that Robbinsdale has a lot of questions regarding the future of the light rail route, with the possibility of the line going down Botno Boulevard and possibly two stations in Robbinsdale. There's a survey where you can weigh in on the future route. It's on the Met Council's website, and you'll be able to find a link to that on our website, ccxmedia.org. Staying connected to the internet is becoming more important even as we emerge from the pandemic. There's an FCC program to help households stay connected called Emergency Broadband Benefit. Eligible families receive up to $50 a month toward broadband service. Comcast customers have to confirm their eligibility in order to get the discount. The program is temporary and we've posted a link for you to learn more which includes eligibility requirements on our website. Hennepin County Commissioner Kevin Anderson recently spoke with us about the importance of broadband access to parts of the western suburbs. I think this is going to continue to be of vital importance for our economy, for our workers' productivity, uh, for everybody moving forward. And if all of our residents are connected, uh, we're going to have to work harder to get there. Anderson says he's seeing need for more access in the western suburbs and hearing from some of the cities in his district that help is needed to bring stable broadband access to some areas. In Maple Grove, the area around Maple Grove Hospital continues to be developed. This past week, the Planning Commission reviewed a plan for rental apartments for people 55 and older that would go west of Maple Grove Hospital. The building would have 169 market rate apartments and would be located near another apartment building in the recently approved Minnesota Health Village campus. It would be marketed toward active seniors with amenities like pool, golf, a golf simulator, community garden spaces, and pickleball courts. The City Council will review the item next week. And the Planning Commission also took a look at senior housing plan for Village Arbor Lakes. It would be a four-story building with 201 units and it would allow seniors to age in place with independent and assisted living as well as memory care. The memory care unit would be in a one-story wing off of the main building. When COVID-19 first hit last year, many companies shut down their offices and asked employees to work from home. It wasn't the most ideal situation for a Maple Grove woman who is a self-described people person. But as Delane Cleveland explained, she came up with a fun and innovative way to bring joy and laughter to her coworkers. Okay. For a little more than a year, Therese Linscheid has had to work from home. So on my phone, I have 3,000 emails. Some people find it convenient, yet it's not something she particularly enjoys. I'm kind of chatty, and I, I enjoy, you know, interacting with people. So it's been really difficult to be home. But early in the pandemic, Therese came up with a unique idea. We all wear a lot of hats, you know, in our role as an admin. So... I took selfies with different hats on and sent them to the group. You see, this is my closet. <laughs> Therese owns a lot of hats. This one was Maleficent. And then this was from the mask. 
and her walk-in closet is basically a treasure trove of outfits. The penguin. So she decided... Like the Danny DeVito penguin. ...to put them... Indiana Jones. ...and her creative talents... I was a doll. ...to good use. That made people pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> ...as a way to entertain and inspire her Cargill co-workers. Now that we're at home, <laughs> I'm dressing for my day. This is my work day, so I'm just gonna, you know, have fun with my work wardrobe. Nearly every day, she'd dress up as historical figures like Albert Einstein, characters from well-known movies like Shrek, or other famous people from the world of pop culture. Nobody told me I couldn't do it, so I just gave it a shot. And every morning, except for holidays and weekends, photos of her dressed like this would go into people's inboxes or social media feeds. I'm up to 161 Instagram followers, so I'm quite the influencer. Week after week. These eyes were from uh, Velma from Scooby-Doo. She came up with new ideas. I assume that everybody has these types of things at their house. While she may not be a hoarder. These awesome feet. Let's just say that Therese has held on to a few things over the years. These are my horns. These props from old Halloween costumes combined with other random things around the house found new life during the pandemic. Once you put a little bit of paint on it, um, it just looked... Pretty awesome. Awesome is probably the best way to describe this do-it-yourself activity. There we go. We'll go full screen. Which officially came to an end on March 18th, exactly one year after she started this project. And in her final post, she showcased her artistic talent and essentially became one with a painting. I thought, well, how would I end? So I decided to end somewhat like I began with kind of just blending in and fading in. In Maple Grove, Delane Cleveland, CCX News.